Hi, I'm Greg Burns, and this is Xvox, a four voice real time pitch shifter in Eurorack format that does some pretty interesting things. It takes a single input and can turn it into a chord, and it is quite fun. I think you're going to be as excited about it as I am. Start off with an intro to the front panel and then move into demos of the features and some patches that really show what it can do. I think you're going to enjoy this. Xbox is a 17 HP Eurorack module. And probably the first thing you'll notice are the color OLED display in the center and below that two rows of colored sockets. They're labeled uh, gate slash trigger and volt per octave. The volt per octave inputs provide independent control of the pitch of the four channels. A color coding of the channels matches the note information shown in the OLED display. Um, it's a little hard to see uh, in this uh, image, but uh, right now with the tonic set to C and no input on the VPO sockets, all the notes show a C in the OLED display. Xbox has got a built-in envelope generator, and when envelopes are enabled, the gate slash trigger inputs trigger the envelope for the corresponding channel. Uh, there are other ways of triggering uh, uh, the envelope. Uh, we'll talk about that later. To the left of the colored sockets are the two audio inputs. Uh, the lower input is normal to the upper one, but when audio is input on both uh, audio uh, sockets, the upper socket goes to the red and yellow channels and the lower to the green and blue channels. On the bottom right are the audio outputs. Uh, the pitch shifted red and yellow voices are sent to the upper audio out socket and the green and blue output to the lower out socket. What this means is uh, with two different audio inputs, uh, Xbox can function as a pair of two voice pitch shifters as opposed to its uh, typical usage as uh, a four voice pitch shifter. To the left of the display are four assignable CV input sockets. Uh, there are about 16 different parameters that can be CV controlled. Uh, parameters not under CV control can be set uh, using the encoder. Above the display are two knobs uh, that can also be assigned to various functions, uh, just like the CV input. To the upper right of the display is the rotary encoder. The encoder knob is used to navigate between user interface pages and to set the parameters that are not under CV control. And then below the encoder knob are two push buttons for quick access to the different pitch shift modes. We'll talk about those later and the envelope gate and other functions. This is my case setup for the demos in this video. I wanted to keep it relatively simple. I'm using immutable instrument plats as the oscillator for all the demos, a tip-top audio Z8000 for, for sequencing for the, uh, those use cases, and other modules for modulation. I mentioned I've been working on this module for quite a while. This was uh, one of the early incarnations, quite a lot larger. All my own uh, hardware design. Current version, pretty slick. It uses the uh, Electrosmith DAISY patch SM module and uh, really reduces the complexity from, uh, from the standpoint of the hardware build. So I think it's time to, uh, to see how it sounds. There are three audio modes. This is the pitch shift mode, using a tip-top Z8000 to sequence the four voices. At the start, notes are quantized to the C major scale. The X and Y at the right hand side indicate the quantize and transpose functions have been assigned to the X and Y control knobs.
Here I'm using the internal envelope generator triggered by pitch changes. Variation is added by twiddling the knobs on the Z8000 while a sequence plays. This next patch is a bit more experimental. Mutable Instruments Stages is the only modulation source. One thing I tried to do in the design of the, uh, of the module is to keep the interface pretty simple. Um, don't like menu diving, uh, it, uh, it, it's just not fun. Uh, so there's minimum amount of that. All the functionality is really uh, pretty much it. Involves the encoder and those two buttons. Press the mode button and it will show the audio mode page. The three audio modes, pitch mode that we've already seen, seventh chord, and progression. Tune the mode at the bottom I'll talk about later. Seventh chord mode, as its name suggests, pitch shifts the voices to the third, fifth, and seventh notes of a chosen chord. In this mode, the red channel sets the pitch of the root note. The other VPO inputs are quantized to stay in the note structure of the chosen chord. Voicing provides control of inversions and drop chords. This patch using the uh, seventh chord mode has a real Rick Wakeman kind of vibe to it. And another patch in seventh chord mode. Progression mode makes it easy to generate chord progressions. I confess I'm no expert in music theory. I learned just enough to write the code. Like seventh chord mode, the red channel sets the overall pitch or tonic note. The modes are the classic musical modes. The seven chords in the mode are identified by their Roman numerals. Voicing works the same as the seventh chord mode. This next patch uses the Tip Top Z8000 to sequence a chord progression. I'm using the internal envelope generator and the voices are independently triggered by a clock divider.
a good time to introduce the gate and envelope functions. To enable the envelope generator, select Attack Decay or ADSR, then select the trigger type. Unison triggers all voices at once. Strum mode triggers each voice in succession, with a delay between each note set by the speed slider. Pitch change triggers a voice when the VPO input causes a note change. A chord or voicing change triggers all voices. In solo mode, voices are triggered by the trigger inputs. It seemed fairly obvious from the very beginning as I was developing the module that it was going to need an internal envelope generator. Otherwise, there'd be no way of uh, controlling the, the level on, on the four voices. On the envelope page, you can choose from a selection of attack and decay curves and set the attack and decay times. When ADSR is selected on the gate page, a sustain point can be set on the decay curve. The next patch uses uh, unison triggering. I'm also triggering plats. The second patch uses strum triggering. Both patches are using progression mode. The pitch shift algorithm in Xbox uses something called the short-term Fourier transform, which breaks down the audio signal into a series of sine waves that um, enable the pitch shifting to be performed by simply moving a sine wave from one place to the other. The fact that we've already broken the uh, audio signal down into a series of sine waves means that we can also do a couple of other things. One is display a spectrum, which shows the uh, contribution of each of those sine waves to the audio signal. The other thing we can do is tuning, uh, because we can find the harmonic peaks uh, in the audio signal and figure out what the note is. And then the third thing that we can do uh, is we can do filtering. Um, which is relatively easy because a filter when you're in when you've got all of these sine waves is simply to say throw away those throw away those so these are features that are built into uh, uh, the xbox uh, software by virtue of the fact that we're taking advantage of uh, being in what's known as the frequency domain so far all of the demos show notes and a keyboard in the lower half of the display on the display configuration page, you can select two other options, just the notes or a spectrum display with colors corresponding to the voice channels. The tuner is one of the audio modes. It's how the other audio modes know what notes to display. There are four tuning options. Off, which basically means you really don't care, 
what the notes are. Live, which uh, attempts to track the input pitch in real time. Automatic, which adjusts the pitch on both inputs to a selected note. And manual, where you are telling the tuner what the note is. The automatic tuning mode is the one you'll probably find is most useful. This final patch demonstrates the filter function. The low and high pass cutoffs are under CV control. The roll-off slope is currently being controlled by the encoder. I hope you found that interesting. Um, as I said, I'm pretty excited about the range of things you can do with this module. Uh, I didn't cover absolutely everything. Um, I didn't talk about the uh, uh, CV configuration, but um, uh, essentially uh, almost any of the functions that you can uh, control with the encoder, you can assign to uh, one of the CV inputs. And in a few of the uh, uh, few of the videos, you will have seen that uh, taking place. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it uh, was interesting. Um, I haven't decided exactly what my next steps are with this module. Um, I think it would probably make an ideal uh, DIY kit. Uh, that's not what everybody wants, but uh, I'm going to see what the level of interest is. Uh, from this video and uh, and see whether this is something that people think that uh, they would like to have. Thank you.